So right here I've got a fairly good selection of PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 1 games. If you guys didn't know, you can actually use Multiman to turn all of these games into ISOs and you can actually load these ISOs onto a USB and once they're on the USB you can pretty much do whatever you want with them. Um, you can use them on emulators if it's a PS1, you can use it on your PSP, you can use it on your PS Vita, you can use it on your PlayStation Classic. With the PS2 you can emulate them on your PC, you can even use them on your PS2. Obviously with the PS3 games you can load these back onto your PS3 um, from like a hard drive or something. There are many many possibilities once you've got an ISO of a game. So I'll be showing you guys how to use Multiman to turn all of these games into the ISOs. So I've got two USBs here. This is my normal PS3 USB. This is what I use to install Multiman. If you guys would like a video on how to install Multiman make sure to watch the previous video on my channel or I will link it in the description. So I won't really be using this USB in this video this is just my main PS3 USB but the USB I will be using is this one this is a SD to USB adapter it's 32 gigabyte which is perfect for putting ISOs on so I'm going to be using this what you guys want to do first is get this and you want to make sure you format it so we're going to go and plug this into my computer we're going to format it to the correct settings and I will show you guys what to do next so once you guys get on your computer and your USB is plugged in, as you can see I'm using an SD card, USB SD card, pretty much the same thing. Um, what you actually want to do is right click it and you want to scroll down and you just want to click on format. Now with format what you want to do is you basically want to format this to factory settings. You want to make sure that the file system is FAT32 as well. So we'll make sure you select FAT32, capacity will always be the same. Allocation size we can leave this as default. Where it says volume label I would just put PS3 or something like like that just so you know what it is and now quick format we can leave that ticked we can click start and we can click ok keep in mind when you format something it deletes everything on there but if you're installing iso games i would recommend having a full size usb just so you've got enough space for each one and there you go 28 gigabytes should be perfect for what i need it for Okay guys, so once we're back off my computer, um, you actually want to plug this into your PlayStation. But I just want to show you guys the games I will be transferring across first. So I've got um, Monster Racer for the PlayStation 1. I will be turning this into an ISO. For the PS2, I will be using Wipeout Fusion. Very, very good game. I used to play this a lot. It's a classic. It's really good. And for the PS3 game, I will be using Batman 2. I've chosen all small sized games just so I can fit all the ISOs on my USB. Um, just for example in this video but if you guys have multiple disc games or you have large games you can also do it you'll just need a lot of a larger size maybe 128 gigabyte just so you can fit all your files on there that might be a good idea but what we're going to do we're going to take our disc so we're going to get our um, monster racer disc and we're going to put this in our playstation so obviously you want to open the case to get the disc and then we also want to plug in my usb so i'm going to go and plug this in right now and i will show you guys what we have to do Okay guys, so I have got my blank SD card slash USB plugged in. I have got Multiman installed. If you guys do not have Multiman, you must have it for this to work. Um, I literally just made a video on it. So if you go back, look at my last video, um, or I'll leave a link to it in the description as well. You guys can install Multiman and we can get our ISO games on our USB. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start up Multiman right now. I've got my PS1 game right here. I'm just going to wait for Multiman to load up and then I'll go ahead and put that in. I will also also load my PS2 game and PS3 game just to show you guys it works all the same but let's just wait for Multiman here is the Multiman boot logo just so we know it's gonna work and basically you want to go on the game section right here and now you want to put in your game so whatever it is PS1 PS2 PS3 just go ahead and put your disc in so mine is what is this Monster Racer for the PlayStation 1 I used to play this it was a pretty cool game better than Mario Kart in my opinion um, let's just go ahead and put the game in and if you just press X on refresh it will actually appear um, it might take some time just to read the disc but here it is we've got Monster Racer it also tells you what type it is obviously mine's a PAL I live in Europe what you want to do on your game is press triangle on it you want to scroll down and you want to press X on create ISO now what this lets you do is create a backup ISO 
of your disc so you won't need the disc anymore if you want to play this game now it gives you two options you can either install it on your ps3's hard drive which is quite cool or you can install it on the usb i'm going to install mine on the usb maybe i want to use this with other stuff maybe i want to use this with my playstation classic or my ps2 or maybe i want to emulate it on my computer there's lots of possibilities once you have your iso and um, isos aren't as easy to download online anymore so what i'm going to do is just press x and i'm going to basically burn this onto my USB and from there I can pretty much do whatever I want with it. So I'm just going to wait. PS1 games, pretty small in size, shouldn't really take too long. It's going to give you an estimation of how long it's going to take and it looks about 10 minutes. So there you go. Not too long. Um, it should actually go down a bit. It should be maybe be about 8 minutes or something like that. But I'm just going to wait for this to copy across and I will be back once it's done. Right guys, so once it's done, it's just going to bring you out to the main menu just like this. You can just go up and press X on Refresh Content, and it's just going to refresh everything. And what we can do now is we can actually take out the disc. So now I think I'm going to try my PlayStation 2 game, so I'm just going to put that in. I'm, I'm going to just go and refresh it. Um, I'm just going to actually wait for this to come up. You might have to just load. Here it is, Wipeout Fusion for the PlayStation 2. I'm also going to copy this across. So again, press triangle, create ISO, and you can go and find your USB. I'm also going to copy this to my USB in an ISO. And in a second, I might do a PS3 game as well. As you can see, with the PS2 game, it might take a little bit longer, but it's pretty much the same length. Obviously, it really does depend on what game. Some games are like, you know, one gigabyte. Some games are five gigabyte. And yeah, I'm just going to wait for this, and um, then maybe I'll do my PS3 game last. Okay, now this one's actually got a message on it. This one says ISO image saved as, and it says where it's saved on my USB. Um, I don't know why the PS1 didn't actually come up with this. I guess we'll find out if it corrupted in a second. If they do corrupt, all you want to do is simply just try it again, I guess. And um, for the last disc, I can actually eject this one. Um, for the last disc, what we can actually do is my PS3 game. And there you go, it's finally come up. If you guys are having the error where your game is just not displaying at all, what you want to do is close down Multiman and just reopen it and your game should actually appear. And now I'm going to create the ISO onto my USB as well. And there you go, we've got all three types of games that the PS3 supports. We've got the PS1 Classic games, we've got the PlayStation 2 games, and now we have got the PS3 games all on our SD card or USB. So this one might take a little bit longer. As you can see, 15 minutes for a PS3 game, not too bad at all, so I'm just going to wait for this, and when it's done, what you guys want to do is take out your USB, um, you can actually put this in your computer, and I will show you guys all of the games and how to find them, because a few of the files are actually hidden, and um, some people don't actually realise, so I will show you guys how to find all of the ISOs. And if you guys were wondering, exactly 11 minutes and 43 seconds. So there you go, not too bad at all. What we can do is press X on OK, and there you go. We can go onto our computer, we can plug in our USB, and um, we can actually take a look at all of the games on there. Okay guys, so now I'm back on my computer and it's time to check out our USB and we can find all of the types of ISOs on here. So if you just double click to go onto it, it's actually in quite a nice layout. As you can see, we've got PS2 ISO, PS3 ISO and PSX ISO. So PSX, that stands for PS1. So let's go and check out this first. The size of our PS1 game was 358 megabytes. So that's to be expected. PS1 games are quite old now and um, they're not really that large in size. So if a few files aren't showing up you can tick hidden for items but as you can see we've got Monster Racer this is our main game the bin file and then we've also got the Q file on here for PlayStation 1 games it's pretty much necessary to just to keep both files so there is our Monster Racer game Next, we've got the PS3 ISO, so let's go into this one. Now, if you're in the PS3 ISO and you're wondering, where the heck is my game because it's not actually showing up, what you guys want to do is make sure hidden items is enabled. If from Windows 10, you can find it under the View tab. And here we go, here is the ISO. So this one is in two parts. Um, this is like the main part, and then we've also got this part right here. And um, this is pretty much the ISO. This will work on any PS3. You still will be able to play it like this. And this is just the format the PS3 ISOs come in. They're kind of split up it also gives you a png of the game and um, so you can actually double click on this and um, i'm pretty sure let's actually see what actually is this i guess it's just the logo that comes up um, when you're about to load the iso 
Oh yeah, so it is. So it's that logo that comes up um, when you're like loading the game. And then last of all for PS2, it's kind of the same. You're probably wondering where the hell is it? You're gonna click on hidden items and it's just like PS1. We've got a Q file and then we've also got the official PS2 ISO, which is actually two gig um, for this game, which is actually pretty good. And these games are fully working. You can mount the ISO to your PC. You can browse all the files. Everything is working and stuff like that. So there you go. That is how you convert all these types of files um, PS1, PS2 and of course at PS3. Now you can do whatever you want with them, you can load them off the USB, you can load them off a hard drive, you can play them on different emulators, it's entirely up to you. Um, now you've got your games backed up. So that's pretty much it for this quick video, I thought this was quite useful, it's a lot easier than doing it on your computer. If you guys enjoyed this video make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.